The ability to remember numbers has many benefits. Memorize and recall such important sequences as social security numbers for everyone in your family, your driver's license number, credit card numbers, birthdays and ages, coordinates, street addresses, phone numbers. Yes, the ability to memorize these still comes in handy. You never know when you're going to make a hot date at the swimming pool with no cell phone in sight. The good news is that there are specific mnemonic techniques for memorizing numbers. They're easy to learn and easy to use. The best part is using memory palaces to store information in your mind is never cheating. Everything you've memorized has been learned in a legitimate way. You just learned it faster and more magnetically than anyone else did. We've already talked about grouping. Memory palaces take your number memory game one massive step further by supergrouping. When you use all the techniques I've already described in this book, you're in effect making your mind magnetic. Once you've got a well-constructed memory palace under your belt, the only thing to do is 1. Code number information using associative imagery. 2. Place that imagery on, beside, in, or at locations in your memory palaces. Of course, there are different kinds of math, so we should talk about these. The Times Tables Many of us struggle with multiplication. We're often quite good, up until 6 and 7 times 8 or 9 rolls around. Some kids have a hard time getting started even with the simpler configurations. The techniques you've learned thus far make it possible to memorize any number or equation with speed and accuracy. You've also learned how to create a memory palace and use it. You, your child, or any math student living under your roof can now memorize the times table with speed and accuracy. But the extent to which the memorized numbers will last depends on a lot of factors. The easiest way to explain these factors is to look at some theories and concepts on memory. Then I'll teach you about recall rehearsal so that you can place any number of formulas into long-term memory. Having done this, you can rest assured that the information will be there when you need it. This chapter will be useful for anyone memorizing math of any kind. Without true understanding, even the simple technique of using memory palaces can seem drab. Worse, it can feel downright unexciting. If you struggle, this chapter will put you in control of how you approach memorization and recall rehearsal. Then, in the second part of this chapter, we'll talk more about the principle of compounding. This will help not only your retention of math you've memorized, but also troubleshoot any recall issues you may be having. One way of thinking about learning and memorization is to see them as two different skills. By the same token, learning is memorization, and all memorization is learning. The only question lurking here is, do you have to understand what you're remembering in order to remember it? The answer, of course, is no. Many times I've learned a word or formula and forgotten what it meant or how it should be used. The number one reason you want to be relaxed when you learn math is because it will train you to be relaxed when you're trying to recall the principles and formulas in an exam setting. Nothing is worse than knowing something but being unable to recall it due to nervousness or feeling like you're on the spot. We need relaxation in order to overcome such boundaries since so many of us experience confidence issues around our memories. Fortunately, this is easily done.